I analyzed over 100,000 voltage frequency points to figure out how AMD Curve Shaper works. Curve Shaper is a prominent new overclocking feature AMD announced alongside its Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 Granite Rich processor lineup. It's an evolution of the Curve Optimizer tool enthusiasts have been using since Zen 3 Ryzen 5000. Curve Optimizer is a tool that lets users exploit the voltage margin by undervolting their processors. Undervolting an AMD Ryzen CPU helps in two ways. First, it lowers the operating temperature and power consumption, and as a consequence, the Precision Boost 2 algorithm can use this additional headroom to boost to higher frequencies. So you tend to get lower temperatures and extra performance. It's a win-win. Curve Shaper adds to the Curve Optimizer functionality by expanding its flexibility with 15 additional tuning points. Let's see how it works. Let's start with the basics, the voltage frequency curve. Simply put, a voltage frequency curve describes the relationship between an operating frequency and the voltage required to operate at that frequency. Every modern SLC has a factory fused voltage frequency curve and uses this to dynamically adjust the power consumption depending on the workload needs. Typically, it's not possible to get the voltage frequency curve from the SLC. However, we can put it together using hardware monitoring tools like Hardware Info and stress test tools like OCCT. Here's the default voltage frequency curve of my Ryzen 9 9950X processor. Since the processor has two CCDs of quite different quality, we have two distinct curves. These curves represent the average curve of the eight cores inside each CCD, because actually each of the eight cores inside the CCD has its own curve. We can immediately make a simple and redundant observation. The higher the frequency, the more voltage is required. For example, for CCD0, we only need 1.05 volt for a frequency of about 4.7 gigahertz. However, we need 1.35 volt for a frequency over 5.6 gigahertz. There's another fundamental rule governing the VF curve. The higher the temperature, the more voltage is required. On average, for 4,766 megahertz, we need 1.06 volt below 40 C and almost 1.08 volt above 90 degrees Celsius. And for 5,165 megahertz, we only need 1.11 volt below 40 C and 1.158 volt above 90 degrees Celsius. So we have two fundamental rules governing the voltage frequency curve. A higher frequency requires higher voltages and a higher temperature requires higher voltages. Curve Optimizer has been one of the most important overclocking tools of the Precision Boost Overdrive Toolkit. It is most commonly known for its undervolting capabilities, but on an AMD Ryzen CPU, it kind of also works as an overclocking tool. Take the Ryzen 9 9950X CCD0 for example. When all cores are active, the maximum allowed voltage is 1.35 volt. The Precision Boost 2 algorithm utilizes the VF curve to find what's the maximum allowed frequency at 1.35 volt. With the default curve, that's about 5630 megahertz. However, the programmed maximum frequency for the Ryzen 9 9950X is actually 5750 megahertz. So we miss out on more than 100 megahertz. And actually, we can use the FMAX Boost Override tool to increase the FMAX by another 200 megahertz. So we're really missing out on about 300 megahertz. Curve Optimizer is an incredible overclocking tool, especially if you have a CPU with lots of undervolt margin. If we set a curve optimizer of negative 30, we shift the entire voltage frequency curve and suddenly we need a lot less voltage for every operating frequency. For example, for 5 GHz we needed about 1.08 volt by default, but with a minus 30 curve optimizer, now we only need 0.995 volts. Moreover, the frequency is also boosting higher. The highest frequency with all 8 cores active has increased by 200 MHz to 5830 MHz. These higher frequencies are now possible, because our curve optimizer undervolting 
pull them below the 1.35 volt threshold. Curve Optimizer works in two ways. With a negative value, we can undervolt, and with a positive value, we can overvolt. For example, for 5 GHz, we get about 1.08 volt by default, but with a plus 30 curve optimizer, we get 1.19 volt. Using a positive curve optimizer is particularly useful in scenarios where you need to rely on the E clock. I've demonstrated that in previous Ryzen 7000 overclocking guides. Curve Optimizer is a powerful tuning tool. It's simple, but not simplistic. And the more you dig into the details of what it does, the more intricate it becomes to figure out how to apply it in a daily overclock. Let's look at the Curve Optimizer a little differently. Let's express the voltage shift relative to the default VF curve. We can see that at higher frequencies, the voltage offset is larger. Even expressed as a percentage change, things aren't linear. The minus 30 curve optimizer adjusts the default frequency above 5.6 GHz by more than 11%, whereas at 4.7 GHz it's only 8%. To make matters even more complex, a plus 30 curve optimizer adjusts the voltage by almost plus 15% at 5.4 GHz. The reason tuning with curve optimizer for our daily overclocks is so difficult is twofold. One, Curve Optimizer impacts the entire voltage frequency curve, so it affects stability across the entire range of operating frequencies, from 600 to 6000 MHz. Two, the same Curve Optimizer magnitude impacts differently across the curve. If you're lucky, your CPU's undervolt margin matches how Curve Optimizer offsets the voltage across the curve, then you'll be maximizing your performance gains. But if you're unlucky and one part of your CPU's VF curve has a lot less margin, then your curve optimizer tuning journey will be a rough ride. Well, until Curve Shaper. Curve Shaper is the newly announced tool of the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 toolkit. It was introduced alongside the Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 Granite Ridge processors. Let's have a look at the feature in the BIOS. In theory, it seems Curve Shaper is pretty straightforward. You get 15 additional tunable points across the VF curve. But the devil is in the details, because AMD's Precision Boost 2 technology doesn't really work with VF points. So instead of getting a list of specific tunable VF points, we get 5 regions and 3 temperatures. The regions have a bit of a vague terminology and are not clearly defined. I will get back to that in a minute. The temperature points are more straightforward as they're defined as minus 5, 50 and 90 degrees Celsius. The theory of Curve Shaper is that you can adjust the voltage frequency curve in more specific areas than with Curve Optimizer. For example, you could say that you only want to undervolt in the high frequency region for temperatures between 50 to 90 degrees Celsius. That would be a common approach to increase the operating frequency in gaming workloads. However, things are not that simple. Let's have a closer look. Let us first set up the drawing board. We begin with three voltage frequency curves of CCD0 of this Ryzen 9 9950X processor. The default curve, the plus 30 curve optimized, and the minus 30 curve optimized curve. That gives us a nice graph with essentially two guard bands around the default VF curve. Now let's go into the BIOS and set a minus 30 curve shaper for all temperature points at max frequency and see what happens. We can see something exciting happen. The voltage frequency curve is adjusted, but only at the very upper end of the curve near the maximum frequency. The voltage for frequencies below 5.2 GHz is unaffected by our undervolt. Now let's go into the BIOS and set a minus 30 curve shaper for all temperature points at high frequency and see what happens. The voltage frequency curve is again adjusted, but this time the adjustment happens much earlier. In fact, the upper end of the voltage frequency curve trends back to our default VF curve. Let's continue and set a minus 30 curve shaper for all temperature points at medium frequency. The voltage frequency curve is still adjusted, but now it happens very early on. 
the peak offset from the default VF curve appears to happen around 4.8 GHz. Lastly, let's see what happens with the low frequency points at minus 30 curve shaper. Now we can see that the voltage frequency curve is unaffected above 4.7 GHz. So let's sum up our findings. Each of the regions appears to be defined by what we'll call shaper points. A shaper point is defined by a shaper frequency and a shaper magnitude. The voltage for the frequencies around the shaper point behave like they're in a gravitational shaper field in the sense that for frequencies within the shaper field, the closer to the shaper point, the larger the impact of the shaper magnitude. The shaper points behave independently, so we can come up with some very wonky VF curves. For example, let's set the medium frequency point to minus 30, the high frequency point to zero, and the maximum frequency point to plus 30. Now we have a curve that undervolts below and overvolts above 5.2 gigahertz. So that's it, right? We've identified the shaper points and how they impact the shaper fields so we can move on. Not so fast. Remember I mentioned there's a significant difference between the two CCDs on this Ryzen 9 9950X. The difference isn't just in the factory fused voltage frequency curve, but also the Fmax. CCD0 has a programmed Fmax of 5750 MHz, whereas CCD1 has a programmed Fmax of 5450 MHz, and that significantly impacts the curve shaper behavior. Here's a graph illustrating the Ryzen 9 9950X CCD0 and CCD1 with curve shaper high frequency points set to minus 30. We find that the curve shaper for both CCDs is remarkably similar. However, the shape doesn't start at the same point. Coincidence or not, that 300 MHz difference is also the difference of the Fmax. One final piece of the curve shaper puzzle is that it stacks on top of the curve optimizer. That means we can combine curve optimizer and curve shaper to fine tune the voltage frequency curve. Let's illustrate by comparing five different curves. For simplicity purposes, let's pick three specific data points. We can make two key observations. First, Curve Shaper indeed adjusts the voltage frequency curve beyond the curve optimizer. That confirms the two settings stack on top of each other. Second, it appears Curve Optimizer is the more impactful of the two tools as it provides a larger voltage offset across the entire curve. That's not unexpected since with Curve Shaper, multiple points are pulling the curve in different directions. You can think of Curve Optimizer setting all the shape points to the same magnitude, thus pulling them all in the same direction. All right, let's wrap this up. When I started playing around with their new Ryzen 9000 series processors, I tried to get my Scatterbencher overclocking guides ready for launch day. However, once I started to explore the Curve Shaper feature, it became apparent that it's a very powerful overclocking tool that demands deeper study to understand how to best utilize it. By no means have I gained a full understanding of the powerful Curve Shaper tool. There's still lots to uncover. I still need to validate the shaper points of the other SKUs using the actual processors, and I also want to visualize the temperature points of Curve Shaper and illustrate how they can impact your overclock. And most importantly, I need to find a best practice method for employing Curve Optimizer and Curve Shaper in my daily overclocked Ryzen 9000 systems. That will feature in my upcoming Scatterbencher overclocking guides.